you are not getting married to your soulmate understand that mm-hmm. okay. it's not a popular opinion <laughs> but but you have to understand that you are getting married to a person who has come into your life to trigger all your childhood wounds so that you can start healing hi there you are listening to spirituality side show where the weird meets the wonderful hit it hello and welcome to spirituality side show we are here with yet another episode and i'm geetika and sheila think oh. up hi hello 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 what so, were you dreaming about the same thing that the entire world dreams of unicorns rainbows prince charming sheila you're not dead i'm not dead are you right okay okay <laughs> so let's let's get started now wake up okay this is sheila and i am geetika and today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic sheila would you like to introduce actually i don't want to tell you what the topic is about but i want to start with how in our childhood we were brought up all wrong okay i want to throw this controversy out onto the table right now we were brought up wrong our parents read to us fairy tales which created the wrong expectations in our mind right that's right what did we grow up on at least i grew up on cinderella sleeping beauty and that's what i read to my uh, daughter my son actually by the time he was born i forgot even to read humpty dumpty to him so, <laughs> so but yes but we grew up on the staple diet of you know uh, women being damsels in distress and the knight in shining armor coming to save us and when that really doesn't work out we get so upset and we start complaining we start cribbing and that's where most of the marriages most of the relationships whether you're married or not you know head towards the rocks that's true that's yeah. true so all we have to blame is the childhood conditioning isn't it but isn't that how people are people have been believing people are still believing and people continue to believe that okay once we grow up once we get married my husband is going to take care of me and i'm going to be at home like the pretty housewife beverly housewife mm-hmm. and clean the house be prim and proper we oh, still want to clean the house okay yeah we'll get a room out <laughs> <laughs> but just because we were brought up that way doesn't mean that it is the right way to be brought up True. i truly believe that in any relationship the the thing that actually comes between people is the expectations that they have of each other yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, most of the time so, uh, most of the time these expectations are not over you don't even express it completely mm-hmm. you expect the other person to read your mind and then do it haven't you that's very that? true very true yeah. what was that uh, statement that you were talking about the other day love at first sight <laughs> love at first sight and divorce at first fight absolutely <laughs> yeah that's the gen z you know that we know now that everybody is just so fast paced and you do it my way or the highway yeah so expectations are so high that it, people genuinely have performance pressure now <laughs> so the topic for this episode is expectations and trying to understand why do you even have it them in the first place yeah. and a good starting point as sheila pointed out yes. is uh, looking at how our childhood conditioning has been yes so while we are always taught that you know women are of course now women are pushed to study is because get a good job become independent but khana banana zarur seekh lena remember how to fill your husband's stomach yes. because that's also important yes. so uh, childhood conditioning definitely is there yes. and there are these norms in the society no ki which a woman will take care of the kid eventually yeah. and especially and, in in our indian communities and our asian communities definitely there is this still this pressure that is there on both genders okay not just that's the true. Yeah, women, that's true n- not just the males on both yeah. the genders you know women are brought up right from childhood mm. they are brought up with the idea that you know their life begins the day they get married that's true yeah when the girl is born parents already start planning for her marriage and by the time the girl reaches 18 19 20 mm-hmm. the pressure is on to find the right match and get married mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now there are more and more women who are not getting married yeah. at the milestones which are set for them by the community and i know how it happens when they are, when you've crossed 30 you've crossed 31 you've crossed 35 <laughs> and you did, and you have yet not settled yeah you know there is that huge pressure 
and the similar pressure is there on the on the males mm. where right from the day they are born they are they are instructed that you have to do well for yourself because you start a family you mm, have to look true. after a family so there is pressure on both sides that's true while women look they have hearts in their eyes mm. men when they look at their wives and the children they don't see love no, or any of those dollar signs i see the dollar signs <laughs> yeah responsibility expenditure expenditure <laughs> you know in the funny part was that when we were children you know everything we want we want to go for a trip yeah. go, go with your husband after marriage yeah. you want to wear a dress uh, above the knees wear it after marriage the girl just has way too much baggage to clear from her husband which he doesn't even know about you know so remember that uh, tv show that we were watching the other day feminine femininity feminine yeah f- uh, feminism feminism yeah, yeah. remember where uh, she's where the girl says that you know i have been allowed to, <laughs> and that is our parameter how much we have been allowed to yeah then the question that i ask is why do you need permission you are not doing something which is illegal you are not doing something which is immoral all you are doing is trying to assert your individuality that's true whether that's it is true. by going to work or whether it is by wearing the type of clothes that you want to wear mm-hmm. or speaking a certain way so why why they why do they have to be barriers on this is how you should behave this is how you should laugh this is how you must work and these are the hours that you will work but see this is all coming out from don't you think our uh, the indian big bollywood ja simran ja ji le apni zindagi because she needed to many days to convince her father to get her yeah. married to that guy and then yeah. if she finally got the permission of ji le apni zindagi so yeah. i feel bollywood is truly ruined it for all of us <laughs> you know there was this amazing uh, a uh, description somebody had given about a soulmate mm. in bollywood movies they show it is when you meet your soulmate your souls fuse into one and the you are broken away from the shackles of loneliness uh-huh. and fused and you have found your eternal friend and lover oh, wow. and nothing could ever go wrong it only goes <laughs> wrong 3 months 3 months if at all that long after the marriage <laughs> when the toilet seats are put up or there is a bed bed towel on the bed, bed. bed. Yeah. we all had that one okay i think there is no doubting that bed towel is the biggest enemy in yes. a marriage yeah. that's why i used to love uh, staying in hotels when we used to go for staycations <laughs> and when we stay on ho- in hotels it is really nice put your put your towel wherever, wherever you want <laughs> i don't care at all because i don't have to clear up yeah but the wet towel and the toilet seat yeah. being put up put down that is one of the biggest biggest yeah i think yeah. Uh, access which fall into a marriage that's true yes. and then how does the soulmate thing work out uh not not the souls don't fuse well <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yeah because somewhere we start believing through these movies and everything where they don't show what happens after the marriage mm. we start believing that you know the minute two people soulmates meet they change for life they have no flaws anymore mm. people have absolutely zero flaws and they are just blending perfectly like a zigzag puzzle and you know this this is something that i tell most of the people who come to me for pre marriage uh, counseling and that is that when you're getting married you are not getting married to your soulmate understand that mm-hmm. okay. it's not a popular opinion <laughs> but but you have to understand that you are getting married to a person who has come into your life to trigger all your childhood wounds so that you can start healing marriage or any kind of relationship for that matter we are not just talking about romantic relationships even relationships between parents and children yeah yeah, yeah between true. your friends relationship between colleagues your bosses mm-hmm. or the people that you meet every relationship is in your life that person is in your life to trigger your uh, to trigger the wounds true which true. have been suppressed so that they can now be healed but we don't true. understand that we don't understand that and we sit in our victimhood saying that you know he should have understood mm-hmm. or she should have understood why why See, is this it? is such a clear gap of building a direct channel of communication between Absolutely. all people i have seen friends who say that 
I said fine and I didn't say fine. Why didn't he understand that I was not fine? And I was like fine. I get it. Yeah, but that is to do with communication because we've never learned how to communicate yeah. to each other. Whether it is to whether it is to our children, whether it is to to our partners, whether it was to our friends. The, I think the only really good relationships that we have are with our childhood friends. Mm, that's true. Don't you? That's true. Yes. That's true. Yeah. Absolutely. And especially because there there is zero judgment. They have seen us through all the foolishness that we did in our childhood, mm. right? And. Uh, They've seen us grow as people, you know, yes. and they've seen us at our yeah. best and yeah. the worst. And, and also the choices that we made, they mm. knew the reasons for that. For however foolish or however smart. Yes, and I think also at some level in our heads when we meet our childhood friends, we go to that that age where we first met them. Mm. Whether mm. it was 5, whether it was 6, yeah, whether true. it was 14, whatever, we reach that. And at that, that age, we have no judgment about each other. Mm -hmm. Of course, there will be fights. Of course, there will be a whole lot of other things, but there is no judgment. And more than judgment, there is no expectation. Right. There's right. no expectation that you have to behave a certain way or I have to behave a certain way. Very which good. is why those relationships are found are really beautiful. And we can yeah. learn from that and put it into the relationships which are more, uh, where there are more fights. But that's all. But Sheena, tell me, think of this, that when your partners, you're living with each other every day, so, you have the Tolia situation every day. Mm. Plus also a lot of your actions uh, are dependent on other person's behavior or their decisions that they make. Mm. For example, you know, people have fights on financial issues that, okay, why didn't you save this month? We were planning for a trip, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Mm. So uh, that expectation is healthy, right? I mean, people should plan their finances together. People should be able to you know, plan life, do you want kids or not, and so on yeah. and so forth. That has nothing to do with expectations. Mm -hmm. That has to do with communication and uh, a matching of your values. Right. So if there is a value match, obviously that relationship will grow and glow. Mm -hmm. yep. But along with the value match, what we do is, there are these unexpressed expectations which come in. Now let's take the example of parents. Yeah. You know that there are about three or four different kinds of parents. Yeah. You have the first set of parents who are really very controlling. Right? Yeah. yeah. They the child, not not just the child, if if it's a man who is very controlling, then no one in the family can take a step without the permission of, of the, the head of the, of the family. Head of the family. Yeah. It can be a man, it can be a matriarch, it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. One of those people who control the movements of each and every one. I have friends who also who live in a family, in joint family, and who are really well off. Right. And yet, they do not have even 10,000 rupees as spending money. Because oh if they have to take money from them, they have to ask permission. There are various levels mm -hmm. of red tapism which goes on. They <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to, to get, mm -hmm. let's say, 5,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees. And you are not allowed that freedom of money mm -hmm. because the money belongs to the family. Similarly, there are various other issues here. Now, that is one set. I have told you this is what you have to study. This is what you right. will study. Whether you, I don't care whether you want to sing. I don't care whether you want, you love playing the guitar. Right now, you have to be an engineer or you have to do economics or whatever. Do that, get a degree which will get you, which will allow you to make money. Right. And then, when you're 60 or 70, do what you want. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that what, what we are told? We are told to study, go to school, study, yeah. get good grades, get a good, good job. job. If you're a woman, get a good job, but not as good as a man, mm -hmm. because then you will not get a good groom. If you're a man, get good grades, go to college, get a good, even better grade, get a top class uh, job and then you get married, then mm -hmm. you have two and a half children, then spend on their education, let them grow up, send them to good schools, let them get good education, let them get good uh, jobs, get them a good match. Once they are settled, by which time you would be about 60 years old, yeah. then you can follow <laughs> your dreams. That, and that's exactly the pattern. Why do you think so many people are unhappy? That's I'm true. not saying that you need to throw everything into the air and now walk off and say no. But the thing is, there is so much conditioning, social conditioning, that we expect that our lives will follow this path. 
and our children will also follow our path. Right. So you have that's why you have these controlling parents in your line of work also. I think you've seen parents who are very who allow the child to do what they want, right? And yet are very fearful about what choices the child would make. Mm -hmm. And there is a third set of parents. I believe that I fall in that mm -hmm. set of parents where we we genuinely allow our kids to do what they want. And when we genuinely allow our kids to do what they want, whether when my son decided to drop out of school because I'm not such a big fan of school or schooling, I told him to drop out. And knowing that, I know that my education didn't come from school. My education started after I decided mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on, after the pressures of life taught me certain lessons. Right, right. And that's where I learned those lessons. And I know that when we need it, when the time is right and when we need it, the teachers appear and the lessons appear. And that's what I told my, my children. But there was so much of pressure from outside where they kept telling me, they kept telling me, saying, are you genuinely, are you sure that you really want to allow your children to do what they want? Are you sure that you don't want to direct their lives? And then I said, no, I'm pretty sure that this is what I don't want them. Let them do what they want. Then it is. Mm -hmm. Let them take, take, you know, let them handle the consequences of their action. Right. And there was a, so much of backlash on how I'm a bad parent. Yeah. On on how I'm really you know better to, than the kids. Yes. And the third thing is that I'm probably hiding behind something in order to get their acceptance. This whole lot of thing because really society as a whole does not understand what it means to be free yourself and let the other person be free and you know Gitika, you've had such a struggle your journey it's been quite inspiring how you found your way till here now right and mm -hmm. it's not been easy right yeah that's true and uh, and here i had the i had a mix of the second and the third kind of parents who were really trying to allow you to do what they want because they understand that that's what was required out for this generation that they were raising but they had so much baggage that they were carrying and of course the pressure of people around that why is she why is your daughter leaving a high paying job and why does she need to follow something and work in an NGO work with children mm -hmm. that she can do over the weekends and so on <laughs> and the problem is that the repercussions of that were such on the child which is me is that I it took me so much more time to garner the clarity that I needed in my life to go along yeah. that I would have if probably if supported uh, I mean see it's a journey but probably if supported I always feel that uh, you know I would have crossed this bridge much faster and gone through a much uh, a more stronger educational way maybe I would have studied further in the field instead of doing jobs and trying to earn yeah. money because I was trying to compensate for the job that I left mm. now problem is not that my parents were not supportive they were just fearful Right, so the second type of parents, they wanted me to be, but they were very fearful. But eventually, also they understood that you know you can't really tie your kids. Yeah. If they're really insisting, it's the way they want to be, and yeah. you have to eventually allow them to follow but their do purpose. You, do you do you realize what's happening here? You know, the entire world now talks about being your authentic self. Yeah, and being your authentic self is quite a struggle now. Yeah, but absolutely. It's become very yeah. painful and especially with, I thought that the neighbor auntie or my own relatives were, uh, you know, uh, people who were really pushing us, were, were the social norm creators. Yeah. But look at social media. It's yeah. become another platform where yes. the people who don't even know you or the people you don't even know are coming out and judging you, passing comments on your videos, on your content, on your thoughts. Yeah. And even bogging you down a lot of people just shut their ideas so many companies that open up with a very unique idea might mm. just need some fine tuning nobody mm. is perfect in the beginning mm. but they're shut down because they don't get enough encouragement it's not just encouragement see uh, now if you're talking about social media you can't blame everything on social media you also have to look at what is your relationship with that social media yeah. because we don't feel adequate enough that's true. We look at that as a judgment, but we look true. at that as a value system that we have to follow. So we look at other airbrush pictures and then we wonder why our camera does yeah. not have the same filters. <laughs> you know, that's, true, that's what true. it is. 
So um, I have also seen that because of the noise that is there outside and inside, my God, the amount of noise that is there inside of your head, you know that if even a simple act of just combing your hair starts up that mean, <laughs> you call it, you have a very kind of, you have a kind of word for it. What is that? Inner, inner ding. Inner ding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the inner ding. I just call it the mean bitch. Mean bitch. <laughs> who, who keeps, who starts up the yeah. moment I'm combing. Look at your hair. Your hair is puffed up here. Your hair is not sitting. Look at your face. Look at those wrinkles. Am I good enough? Am I tall enough? Am I fair enough? Is my nose proper? Am I smart enough? Am I a fraud? There's this whole, whole voice. There's a village inside which is talking inside. And it's very difficult. And those voices are added. Along with those voices, mm -hmm. what is added is the voice of the society around me. That's true. Now, there was a... There was a participant in one of my classes when I was speaking to them about how we need to change our social conditioning. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she said, but what can I do? The people, they do it. The one thing that we forget is that the society is made of people. And as you start changing, that world around you starts changing. Correct. You uh, even I think in one of the uh, workshops you were having with you over the weekend, you were talking about your workshop was about abundance. So she was yeah. telling us that tell me the name of five people that you hang out with, and I'll tell you how much is your income going to be. <laughs> and as you grow even gradually in yeah. in your field, money wise, mental uh, capability wise, intelligence wise, those five people change. Yes. So you are attracting the kind of people that you really are going to support your mental state of mind at that yes. moment. And you have to make that conscious decision to get those kind of people, people into, your, into your circle. Energy circle. Yeah. Now, uh, what happens here is that we are, when we sit here and we are expecting love from another person, one of the one of the main things that I have realized is that people don't really value themselves that much. They don't really love themselves that much. They are not kind to themselves. Mm. They have no compassion towards themselves. And they are expecting, because they have none of these things towards themselves, they are expecting another person to come in and give it to them. Whether it is the woman expecting mm. the Prince Charming to come and really make her feel loved, yeah. or whether it is the parent who is expecting the child to, you know, really, you know, when, when Compensate babies... Compensate for the sacrifices yeah, they made. Because when babies are really small, they look up at you with really adoring eyes and you are their world. And as they start growing up and growing away, parents are no longer their world. Yeah. I've seen it with my, my own children. <laughs> you suddenly become very negligent in their scheme of things because there are other things. Now friends become very important, your job becomes very important, your social circle becomes very important and the parent loses that sense of importance. Mm -hmm. Now you have to understand that parents themselves are not happy in themselves True. and they are looking for external signs of validation. Now if we just drop that and we say that if I can give myself the respect and affection that I'm looking for from another person, then it becomes much more easier. Absolutely. And uh, if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this podcast or this uh, video, you're watching this video, I personally feel that you're old enough to comprehend. And if you're old enough to comprehend this, then you're old enough to take charge of your feelings because the opinion of anybody else does not matter anymore as much as yours or at least it should. Hmm. So uh, now is the time that you yeah. should really start focusing and take ownership. I mean, yes. the time of ooh, just because of them, I couldn't live my life. They hmm. didn't give me enough education. My God, there are so many people we listen to yeah. who at the age of 87 are finishing their college degrees. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, they're taking ownership. Yeah. They're not yeah. expecting anybody else yeah. to come and be their uh, and save the damsel absolutely. in distress. And sitting, sitting over here and making assumptions about why another person what another person is thinking about you. I was with a friend the other day and uh, I heard him say, you know what, I think this person is a little jealous of me. And I think, you know what, I think this person really does not like me. And I, I asked him, I said, what is your proof? They're just assumptions. True, true. Because we have judgments about ourselves. 
we project them onto others yeah because we have expectations for ourselves we project it on yeah. others yeah and then we live our life hoping that the other person is going to read our minds understand and then take care of us hmm. no one is coming to take care of you <laughs> hey you are opening a big box of worms now <laughs> yeah. and this can of worms we will open further in, in our the next episode, episode. true right now i want to actually uh, you know uh, end with the quote by rumi hmm. now uh, rumi used this in a very romantic context where he says that what you seek is also seeking you it will it is meant to give a lot of hope to people looking for their soulmates <laughs> <laughs> think what you seek is also seeking you i want you to think of it in a different way what you seek is also seeking you since if you are seeking love that love is seeking you it is there inside of you you just not looked at it you are seeking respect it's there inside of you give it to yourself you're seeking approval approve of yourself i think wow, that's, that's heavy we're going to take it forward in the next episode hope you like the conversation and hope you it got you thinking a little bit so come join us for the next episode as well as we continue discussing on this topic thank you so much for listening to us have a good day <laughs> <laughs>